Hi guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, then you are watching me create a piece called The Butterfly Effect. And this piece is actually inspired by everything that's been going on lately and how small actions actually have big um, consequences. So enjoy my creating of the piece. Random art tips and rambles with Rafi. Hola, you amazing artist. It's Rafi. And Klee. And today we are here in the studio getting ready to talk about, what are we talking about today? We're, we're talking about monies, particularly money exchanges. Money exchanges? Yeah, so our question is a great one, and actually I have our question and then a reverse question. I'll explain that later. Okay, excellent. But our question comes from Martin Murphy, who watches our YouTube channel, and Martin is on Instagram at martinmurphy underscore art. If you guys get a chance to check out his art, it is incredible. Check out his art, you guys. His question is, here's a payment question. Has anyone ever stiffed you with a payment? And do you accept personal checks? Thanks for all you do for your followers. It's incredibly helpful. Oh, thank you, Martin. I do not accept personal checks uh, from anyone but i have accepted personal checks in the past as have i personal checks for me are reserved for very special circumstances these days like uh somebody who's been a long time collector something like that right right and i think i think that uh when it comes to that kind of thing because early in the beginning i remember that um, some people are just not comfortable paying with credit cards. Some people are not, uh, don't carry that cash around. So yeah. they have a check. I also have collectors that only will use cash. Yeah. They will not do any other form of payment, which of course is pretty safe to do. When I was growing up and I worked at the jewelry store, mm -hmm. if there was anything where you were not going to get paid your monies, it was a check because checks can bounce. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when it comes down to it, Martin, uh, no, I do not accept personal checks. The only time that I will accept a personal check is if this is somebody that I absolutely and completely trust. Like and, your mom. Yeah. And I know where they <laughs> live. No, we have some customers. We have some customers that we accept personal checks from because yes. they are longtime collectors and we know where they live so we can hunt them down if we need to. Matter of fact, I've had a longtime collector that um, I never met him in person, but he's just been a longtime collector online. And he's an old man and yeah. he writes checks. That's just how he rolls. But because we have good rapport, it's totally fine. Yeah. Basically, it's about like, has, has a customer ever stiffed you in general? So not just with checks, but I think we're talking about you're hired to do a commission. You do the commission. And then you don't get the money. And then they disappear. Yeah. yeah. Now, I don't know if that's specifically what Martin was referring to, but I know that that's something that a lot of people have dealt with, myself included. Yeah. Yeah. When people basically, they ghost you after the fact, after you've uh, you've taken on the commission and yeah. you've, you've done it. That has happened to me a few times. I uh, That no longer happens to me because... Um, I will not start working on something until I at least collect a deposit. A deposit. That way you know your collector or your potential customer is somewhat invested. Yeah, exactly. They're somewhat invested. I know in the beginning I was hesitant about taking a deposit. And I think what I didn't think about back then is that the moment that you start investing money or materials into something then or even just your time then you are making a personal investment into the piece. And if you want things to be equal across the board, uh, your customer also should be making an investment in the piece. Now, at that point, since you're the one creating it, their investment is going to be financial. Mm -hmm. So like that way, both of you are invested into this piece that is about to be created and uh, if something goes wrong where maybe the the collector of the art just cannot uh, complete the transaction or you cannot complete the transaction, at least everyone uh, materials are covered. Everything you could go somewhere from there versus somebody just disappearing and then you right. don't, you don't have you don't have any money. 
Um, back in the day, I never collected a deposit, and it's because I was afra- afraid to ask for a deposit, but it was also because I was afraid that I couldn't do the job. Right. Um, even still, I almost always do collect a deposit. There are some instances where I don't, if, for example, it's a slight deviation from something I normally do, and I know that I can sell it. Yeah. Um, if, if I can sell it, if the customer changes their mind, I'm not too worried about it. Um, but if it's highly specialized, highly personal, but sometimes I still come up against it, you know, like if I'm not sure that I can produce the work, uh, I sometimes won't collect a deposit. It's almost like I don't want to, I don't want to make it seem like I can for sure, for sure do this. I think a lot of times, um, uh, that insecurity is because you almost don't want to burden the person with, uh, with your perceived failure. You know, like, yeah. I, I don't want to charge you monies because if I can't do this, then, uh, you know, I don't want to have to go through the the pain of giving you the money back. Right. Where well, the fact of the matter is, it's really not a big deal. If you can't produce the work, uh, returning the deposit is usually not a big deal. Now, let's talk about that, though, because oftentimes you take the deposit and you order materials with it, right? Yeah. And then let's say you produce a crap turd and... Uh, you do have to refund that deposit, but you already invested it in materials. So then how do you proceed forward? There's only been one time where I have given somebody a full refund. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was because, not because I couldn't create the piece, but after I had taken the commission, I realized that I did not want to create the piece. Mm -hmm. And I did order the materials and I ordered everything. But because um, I was going to be using the materials for something else, I felt comfortable refunding, Just refunding their, their yeah, money. refunding their money, um, and you know, and, and the the fact of the matter is that a lot of t- the deposit isn't just covering the materials that you're buying; it's covering the materials that you're buying, the time that you're spending uh, yeah. working on it, the sketches, you know. So there's a lot involved there, um, honestly. And I've had I've had people that have canceled the commission because they just couldn't afford it mm-hmm. anymore. And instead of getting a refund, they've told me, just keep the deposit. Don't worry about it. Um, and even to a point where I decided that I was going to cancel the the commission, the person told me, just keep the deposit for all the work that you already put into it. Don't worry about it. So, like, I think I think that comes down to a case by case basis. Yeah, definitely. If you are if you d- just bought the materials and you didn't use the materials at all, then um, I would definitely give the person a full refund. If you bought the materials and you already did some work that they could take with them then that's where you want to you want to follow whatever guidance is going on inside of you and whatever makes you feel the best in that situation. Yeah. Uh admittedly, I've been actually super lax about deposits lately. Uh like I just haven't been worrying about it and for the most part it's been fine. Yeah. Um but about a year ago I had someone ghost me. Uh you would think that I would have learned my lesson, but I've been super lax. I know it's something that's really easy to overlook, but I guess a deposit really is the best insurance policy for you as an artist. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you. Um, if you are not taking a deposit, and this is not to say anything about you, Clee, but if you are not taking a deposit, chances are there is some insecurity attached to that, whether it is the insecurity of being able to take on the job, because once money gets involved, now you become you're responsible. Yeah, you're locked in. Or um, your fear of asking for the money. Mm-hmm. And, and that's a that's a big deal. That's a big deal, especially for artists. I've run into a lot of artists that um, have a really hard time, even when they're selling their art, um, to ask for what the art is worth. Yeah, absolutely. To even like formulate the words, to yeah. formulate the lingo, like how do I say this? The truth is, I think most people expect to pay a deposit on a commission. What I found is that no one's really surprised. No. In fact, sometimes they ask me. Yeah. Um, and that's where I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, deposit. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me personally, it's the fear that I either that I can't produce the work, uh, so I don't want to lock myself in, or um, I have no earthly idea what the final cost is going to be. 
Um, that can be really tricky in the jewelry world right. when you're talking about stones and metals and stuff. Well, I mean, and that's that's something that uh, I I think I think everybody's going to deal with this situation in a different way. And I think for you, you're a little bit analytical when you're coming up with your pricing because your pricing is very formulaic. Yeah, and it changes and, all the time. And it and it changes. So like the the idea behind a deposit. Um, and this maybe this will clear things for other people out there as well, because when you're dealing with um, art materials like you are not going to charge the customer um, the little bit of paint that you're using out of a tube of paint and you're going to calculate that cost. Right. Like you are going to basically put down a deposit that is going to make you feel good, even if this person turns around and says, Forget it. We're not doing this. Right. So you could just say a hundred bucks. Exactly. Fifty bucks. Yeah. If it's if it's a two thousand dollar commission, I'm going to take at least forty percent of that. Right. So right. like that's why I figured out at a percentage of the estimated cost. That's a good method. I mean, I think a little too much about metal markets and such. Well, if the commission's in gold, what's the gold yeah, price today? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I mean, and that's the thing, you have to figure out an estimate towards you know what the piece may cost it may cost you between here and here this is how much i need for the deposit to get it started so yeah. you could and you could give somebody a variance and it all depends on what they're comfortable with uh you know you could tell them like this piece is going to cost them a thousand dollars anywhere between a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars and they're like well fifteen hundred dollars is a little too high then at that point you know that you're going to be able to adjust the materials and the size and whatever it is that you need to adjust and figure out what's going to work and figure out what's going to work and then from there you could figure out what your deposit's going to be if you have a percentage like most of the time i do i do anywhere between 30 to 50 percent for the deposit mm -hmm. because i know that i'm going to feel good there now, this all depends, too, on how much the piece is. If the piece is a much more expensive piece, then usually I'll take a 30% deposit. If it is a piece that is going to be $100, then I take a 50% deposit. I'm going to take 50 bucks as a deposit. Yeah. And I always give them the option. You could pay me the full price right now or... Uh, you could give me a deposit. Yeah, you never a uh, ask them to go all in yeah. immediately. Yeah, exactly. unless they want to. Unless they want to. And the thing about it too is like, um, it took me a little bit of time to get to that place, but I did get burned so many times where I would get started on something, put the work into it, and then the customer just disappeared. Yeah. And, and for the most part, it's painting. So like I can tweak the painting and make it into something that I could sell somewhere Worst case else. Worst scenario, you right. could paint over it. Yeah, exactly. If it's like portraiture. Exactly. Worst case scenario. Or um, I've been given permission to create this image of this person. So then I'm going to tweak it. You know, maybe yeah. I'm going to put a mustache and some buck teeth on them. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it is that I decide to do because the, the person burned me. But at the same time, I'm I, of course, I'm not going to do something like that. But there is freedom there on your side if the customer takes off. Yeah. Now, you don't want that to happen for somebody like Martin who spends so much time. A lot of time goes into Detailed his work. Yeah. Um, for him to get burned by somebody who just disappears, like that's, that's a lot of material, a lot of money, a lot of time spent working on something. Yes. And in that situation, you need to take a deposit that is going to be fair to you. Yeah. Now, uh, I because I don't know for sure because there was mention of a check, Martin, I hope it's not the case that the customer actually took the art, wrote you a bad check. And this is what we're talking about. Yeah. If that's the case, uh, that's a whole other ball of wax moving yeah. forward. Well, if a customer... Check fraud is illegal. It's a big deal. It's illegal. That is yeah. a federal uh, law that you're breaking there. Yeah. So the different course of action, I mean, whatever kind of action, we're not lawyers. We're not allowed yeah. to say what you should do in that case. Um I know, you know, checks are iffy for that reason. Yeah. Uh, there's some folks I know that... Um, at the market uh, downtown, they would uh, write down credit card information for processing later. Yep. Uh, like they wouldn't run the card then and there uh, because the point of sale system was elsewhere. 
And I was like, that's so dangerous. Exactly. That is so dangerous. What if you mix up two numbers? What if that card is bad? Yeah, like, what if the what if the card is stolen and they they put a yeah, you're going to you're going to miss out on that money if it gets declined in any way shape or form? Any practice like that where you find out later whether it's going to go through is unsafe yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, and and that's why like I would be very very careful who you take checks from. Um, make with sh- the exception of businesses, usually, like I would corporate still, jobs, I would still be careful with who you take checks from, even if it is a corporate business. If it is an established corporate business, then yes, I would. But uh, being in being in business, growing up in in different businesses, you got to be careful because. If somebody is going to scam you out of money, they're going to use a check. That's why all of those um, scams for artists or anybody else, it's always about, I want to buy this piece. I'm going to send you this check. This check is now (laughs) uh, $3,000 more on this check. That's okay. Just deposit. You know, like their check fraud is a big deal. And so just be careful. If it is an established business and you trust them, yes. But if there is any inkling in your gut of like, "Mm, I don't know, I don't know about this, Mm -hmm. I would definitely, definitely not take a check. Yeah. And also, just as a side note, I've been following the actions of the Freelancers Union um, and their whole movement of freelance isn't free. Uh, yeah. protective services for artists who aren't getting paid oh, for yeah. whatever reason. Yeah, absolutely. And they're trying to expand that much bigger. Right now they're based in New York, but that's that's growing. That's a growing movement. Yeah, most definitely check out the Freelancers Union. Freelance uh, isn't free. Yeah, freelance isn't free. Martin, I hope that was helpful. And so on the flip side of Martin's question, we actually got a question on our last live stream that was kind of the opposite of Martin's question, and okay. we didn't get to it. But the question was, "What do you?" Wh- but the question was, "What do you do if you're an art buyer and you commissioned a piece of art and you paid for it, and now the artist is ghosting you? Like oh, you wow. don't, you didn't get any progress updates. They're not answering your calls or your emails. Like you paid for the art and now nothing." Wow. Yeah, which um, you know, I know that happens to people too. Yeah. Yeah. Um I try to be personally, I try to be as communicative as possible even if it's taking eons. I've had commissions that have dragged on for eons depending yeah. on, but I try to at least touch base with people. Always, 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 always as an artist, as a business owner, as anything, you always communicate what is going on with the people that are purchasing stuff from you. Even if your update is, I don't have any updates for you. Nothing is happening. Ex- I just wanted to let you know you are still, this is still happening. Yes. I, yes. I am still thinking about you. <laughs> we are still doing this. I just want to let you know what is going on because uh, it, especially if somebody paid for it already. Yeah, it was bought and paid for. Oh my goodness. Uh, so what do you do in that situation? There are certain measures I take and have taken to try to make customers feel more comfortable um, so that they do, because I have people leaving expensive stones with me yeah. to set in a piece, and they've either put a down payment or they've paid it in full. Oftentimes, when I did shows regularly, um, first time meeting me right out the gate, they're leaving me an opal, they're paying me money, and yeah. basically, if I was not a, a morally solid person, I could just take, take off, off with, with that stuff. Yeah. So I always try to give them a receipt either digital or a physical receipt. Um, I give them all my contact information um, and anything else that they need. Once even, uh, I think I left a piece of collateral with a customer. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Basically saying, this is a placeholder. Like, I'll get this back from you when you get your piece from me. Um, Whatever the customer and you both feel comfortable with, because I don't want people to feel nervous. I think one of the things that you'd be able to do, though, like for this person, what they'd be able to do in this situation is, A, was the artist displaying their work at a farmer's market, at a flea market, were they displaying their work at a festival? If so, 
Um, get a hold of the people that run the festival or the market or the flea market. Let them know what is going on, what happened. And usually the people that are in charge of said festival has the contact information of the artist. Mm -hmm. And if the artist, um, basically what will happen there is that if the artist does not respond, then he's burning his bridges with whoever it is that he did business with. Absolutely. So that's that's definitely one route to take. Of course, there are other factors involved too. Like you never know what happened. There, a lot of times when a customer doesn't get back to me, uh, honestly, my first response is to worry a little bit. Usually when I contact a customer, um, I'm not like, where's my money? You know, like I'll contact the customer. I'm like, hey, just checking in. Want to make sure that you got this. And a lot of times what I'll do is, uh, especially if I'm being ghosted, I will contact the customer via email. If I have a phone number, I will call the customer. Basically, I try to, I actually set an alarm to contact the customer once every single day um, for at least four or five days. And then if I get no response, then I set an alarm or, or a reminder for a month out. And then I'll try them again a month out. Um I, I think I have gotten over the idea because I do collect a deposit and because I've gotten very comfortable with uh, the, the money interactions that I have with people. I think I've gotten over the idea of like, oh, because a lot of times like, well, I don't want to I don't want to be annoying or anything like right, that. Yeah. You know, like, oh, my God, what if I ask this person for a deposit and they get annoyed by me? That, that's one of the reasons, like just avoid all that crap. And just collect a deposit right from the get-go. If they are not willing to give you a deposit, then they are not serious about the commission. I think you're right. Yeah, absolutely. That that that. If there is any way to be able to qualify whether or not a person's uh, commission is worth you taking the time to do it, is whether or not they pay for the commission or not. Yeah. And unfortunately, if you are the person that has paid for the commission and the artist just disappeared, <laughs> yeah, like I said, man, that really sucks. And I'm sorry about that. But contact whatever uh, the show was or whatever place it was that you uh, interacted with the artist and find out uh, what it is that they could do for you because they should be able to do something for you. Yeah. And keep on it. Yeah. I mean, at that point, don't worry that you're being pestery or whatever. Keep on it. Maybe something did happen. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a good way to find out. If yeah. you If you contact the, the show organizers, then you can find out what is really going on. Or if the artist happens to be a member of a gallery, so on and so forth. Yeah. Any way you can try to, to find out. So I think we've tackled both sides of this uh, topic of money exchange. Deposits are a good idea. Deposits are a good idea. And, um, you know, uh, making sure that you get all the artist information and making sure that you get whatever show information that they're at. Just and so that you could cover all your bases. Communication is a good idea on both sides. I think there's no faster way to burn bridges than to ghost someone on either side. Man, it doesn't. It does not make sense to me. Like if you are interested in ordering something, or someone is interested, or you are interested in doing a commission for somebody, then communication is important. I think that the moment that communication gets lost, then you you lose the relationship there. Yeah. Martin, thank you so much for that question. Uh, hopefully, that was not somebody skipping out after giving you a bad check. I certainly hope I not. I really hope that that's not the case. And if it is, obviously, that then you got to go the legal route and we're just not qualified to give that information. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm curious to know how you guys feel about asking for a deposit or if you've ever had a situation where somebody ghosted you or gave you a bad check. Oh, that's or, so not good. Mm, or any, any conundrums related to the money exchange end of the art world. Yeah. Yeah, I, just leave that in the comment section. We'd love to hear your story. And thank you so much for listening, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to listen to more like this, go ahead and click anywhere around here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios.